Welcome to this screencast on configuring the SSH FTP data destination using the web application. Let's go to Data Destinations. SFTP data destinations are only available to Enterprise Edition customers. If you see an inquiry button instead of a plus sign, you will need to contact Datasif to enable this feature. I'll select the SFTP destination to see how it is used. Data is written to an internal queue and periodically transferred as a series of files over a secure channel using SSH to an SFTP server. If the data stream is paused, Datasift will continue to store data in the queue for up to one hour. If there is an issue communicating with the SFTP server, several attempts are made to reconnect. I'll click on Add a new SFTP destination. The first part of the form requires information about how to connect to the SFTP server. I'll add Screencast as my label and the IP address of the SFTP server. My SFTP server is configured to use port 2222. The next part of the form determines how files from Datasift will be stored on the SFTP server. Files will be delivered to the root of a user's home directory. Adding a prefix to the file is optional. I will add screencast as my prefix. I'll select JSON New Line Delimited from the Data Formats list. This determines the output format for the stream data. The next two fields determine how frequently you want to send data and how much data to accept in each delivery. The minimum amount of time to wait before sending the next file can be set from 10 seconds to 5 minutes, or continuous. I will select 30 seconds for this screencast. The maximum amount of data recorded in a file depends on the amount of data expected in the stream. I'll set the maximum file size value to 500 kilobytes. If you want to see files on the server as they are downloading, as well as downloaded files, change this value to yes. I will leave the default set to no. In a production environment, files will probably be compressed to take up less space on the server. I will accept the default value of none for my screencast. In the Auth section of the form, I'll enter User1 as the username, User1's password, and test the connection. The test was successful, so I'll click on Create and Activate. I can see SFTP in my destinations list. Let's filter some data and send the stream to the new destination. From the Streams tab, I'll use the Starbucks filter. which is filtering any data source content that contains the string Starbucks. I'll close that and record the stream. For this demonstration, I will use Start Now and Keep Running. I'll continue. Select Screencast SFTP as the destination for the stream recording and continue. After reviewing the configuration, click Start Task to start the recording. The recording is running. Let's verify files are being transferred. I'll open a terminal window that's connected to my SFTP server. I'm logged in as User1. And in User1's home directory, files have been transferred every 30 seconds with the prefix of screencast. I'll open a file to confirm the interactions have been formatted correctly. Interactions are in JSON format with each interaction on a new line. This is the first interaction in the file. 
and this is the second. I'll return to the browser. I can see that 504 interactions have currently been streamed and I'm going to stop the task. Thanks for watching this screencast. Look out for more screencasts in the Configuring Data Destinations series.